COVID test passed, vessel documents in hand, we raced out of Mayo across the channel to Santiago Island, to the capital city of Praia. It was a downwind sail, wind speeds topping at 20 knots. Galapan was trotting along at 6 to 7 knots. But as we made our way across, the waves began to grow. Galopan was heaving back and forth heavily. I had to watch out for an uncontrollable jibe. Further on, my heading was direct to the southern point of the island, directly downwind. I furled my Genoa as I flopped leeward of the main sail. As the day wore on, clouds formed and the temperature dropped. Waves were still heavy and I knew they would diminish as we rounded the coast. Peter and his crew were well ahead, as his boat is faster. The wind was still strong as I prepared to enter the bay. He had dropped the sails before entering the well-protected harbor. I decided to wait until I was within the breakwater and out of harm's way of the swell. I know this bay, I've been here before. So I went in motor sailing. Just within, there were fishermen laying out their nets. I had to get around them and look out for any other boats or large ships. Once in a bay, I dropped my mainsail, put out my fenders and prepared my lines. I tend to come in very slowly and let the inertia of the boat inch me into position, then use a quick jolt to reverse to stop the drift. This was a relatively easy approach. There's no wind and plenty of room. I was all prepared and as Peter says, Perfect. Like done this before. All right, what do you think of being here? I rudely ignored Peter's question as I was wholeheartedly greeted by a special friend. Danny. He had repaired my Perkins engine about a year ago, the last time I was here. So I immediately invited him for grog, and of course as well Peter. Grog, eh? There's nothing like a strong drink and a boasting about our hearty day at sea. This is Praia, which means beach. It's Cape Verde's capital. We had docked at the fishing pier, which is not far from the city's historic district. Here you dock side by side along the fishing vessels of all size. After the rolling anchorage in Mayo, this was absolute calm. It felt almost as if we were on land. We checked in with the office. I negotiated a deal for our 10 day stay at about 120 euros. Here we are on Praia, on this main pedestrian street, it's really cool, we're getting a little something to eat. And I got this uh, cool little gizmo, I hold my, uh, my phone so I can, uh, I can do self-interviews. What? I can do this too with it. Just like the boat. <laughs> Here's my friend Lily, my BFF friend Lily, my La. And now to be a fit friend, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll show you my gizmo there. It's working here. Hold on. A short taxi ride away is the historic center called Plateau. The Portuguese re-established the capital here after years of defeat and pirate attacks at their initial location at Cidade Velha. Back at the fishing pier, fishermen come in and out at all times. 
It's definitely a working fishing port, man. Nobody's uh, out of work here, man. There were some guys who shouted out my name, and it was none other than the fisherman who gave me a fish the day before. I had cleaned it, and we promptly seared and relished it that evening on Peter's boat. We were urged by our Cape Verdean friends back in Mindelo to go to the famed Sukupira market. My friends Paish and Wendy, as well as Lily, had said this was the place to search for deals. And deals we found. As well as some proper West African food for two bucks a plate from this wonderful Senegalese chef. Alec had been put in charge of water refilling. That had to be done at the water and ice filling station several meters away. Just part of the life aboard. We must adapt to the environment, which Alec successfully did so. Our homes were constantly on the move as fishermen would squeeze their boats to unload their catch at the pier. They lightly bumped us around to shift boats. You'd hear them hop on deck, but never any harm done. Just say hello and a smile would beam back. Sometimes we'd help tighten lines, all in brotherly seaman's courtesy. This is part of cruising and living aboard in far-fledged countries. This is part of the adventure. And not quite the comfort of a yacht club marina. We all went back to the historic district. This pedestrian street is full of cafes and shops as well as the municipal market. The best stocked in Cape Verde. So we stocked on veggies. That is more eel, the Cape Verdean delicacy, and what we had deep fried a few days ago. Peter had brought his drone and exercised his cinematic skills. He then generously invited us for an exquisite beef fondue lunch. Pry is a great town. Like I said, Praia is a great town, but many will say it's risky, and most all cruisers give the city negative reviews and do not recommend sailing here. Well, I wanted to prove the opposite, and I did. We had a great 10-day stay, from markets, well-stocked stores, good foods and fine hotels for Peter and Lily to spend Valentine's Day at. But it was time to go.
Wandering along the coast, I felt a good strong beam wind, so I opened up my Genoa. It was only a few miles away, so I didn't bother with the mainsail. Motor sailing was the way to go here. And for once, I gained on Peter's faster boat. Up the coast was our next destination, Cidade Velha, Sub-Saharan Africa's first and oldest European colonial establishment. We initially wanted to cross over to the last two islands I had yet to discover, Fogo and Brava. But we decided to abort our voyage to these islands because weather conditions were not in our favor. And Peter had to get back to Mindelo to prepare his boat to be sold. So Cidade Velha was our next destination. I had been here before and knew the anchorage. I dropped the hook and Peter followed. Here we are steeped in history. Here we are, Cidade Velha, oldest established town in sub sahara Africa by colonialists. Okay? So, but it's been here for like 600 years, man. Here we are, anchored here where. Columbus came, Vasco de Gomez, Magellan, uh, Sir Francis Drake, he ransacked this place. This place is full of history. Apparently there's 80 sunken ships out there, but they're too deep. You know, like 60, 40 meters or something like that, apparently, but there's really been tons of pirate wars and all sorts of stuff here. Great history, but it's hard to find something about it. And we'll find out something else. Great to have you along in this voyage. Give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel any value in this series. Me and Gallopin promise you a good time every Wednesday. So welcome aboard.